Welcome to another episode of Growth Hacker TV. I'm Bronson Taylor, and today I have Samir Patel with us. Samir, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, um, it's, been, it's been wonderful to get invited. Uh, it's a privilege. Thanks so much. Absolutely. I mean, with your resume, you're the exact kind of guy that we want on this show. Um, so to introduce you all to Samir, I, I want to give our audience a staggering stat, which is that Samir has managed over $1 billion in growth marketing and analytics. I mean, that, that is quite a number. Um, there's a reason you're a growth mentor at 500 Startups. There's a reason that you speak all over the world about startup growth. And I'm really excited because today we're going to get to dig into your growth framework, which you call the five P's of growth. Um, so let's start yeah. with the five P's of growth. You know, old school marketing has the four P's, right? Product, placement, position, um, you know, that kind of stuff. Yours is the five P's of growth. What made you want to have a growth framework? Yeah, very good question. So I think what, you know, I was trying to, um, you, know, you know, I've been in marketing for almost uh, 15 years, right? Digital marketing. And it has evolved, as you know, you know, there's so many moving pieces, um, so many new channels, new platform, new winners, um, new ways to market. And I was trying to get my head around, like, if I had to... <laughs> If I had to, you know, run a huge group or, you know, advise a public company or even a startup, right, uh, in terms of not necessarily tactics, like what little things to do to tweak your growth, but on um, how to plan and execute, right, on a daily basis. And I think that's when um, I wanted to incorporate everything without making it too general, right? Yep. Um, so what it does, I think the, what the five previous frameworks does is pretty much... Um, lets you uh, plan and execute better and more smoothly over time. Yeah. Um, yeah. What happens, or let me ask you this first, do you think there is a, too much emphasis on tactics and not enough emphasis on kind of the big picture? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I'll tell you a little story. <laughs> so there were, there were three, three men in India who uh, decided to go out um, on, on, a, you know, on a rowing trip, right? And they were on the board, and like they had they had some hash, and you know they were go they were pretty much drugged up, right? Mm -hmm. But they were super enthusiastic about rowing, right? So they got on the board, and they kept rowing and rowing and rowing all night, right? All night. And in the morning, they woke up, and they realized um, they were still at the shore. They had forgotten to you know de-anchor the boat, right? Mm -hmm. The rope was still tied to the anchor. Mm -hmm. So so that's what I see. I think tactics. People want to row because they have so much energy, so they just start doing shit all over the place. <laughs> but they they don't think where they're going, right? Or uh, if they're even moving, you know. I, so, I, so I love that story. I didn't know where we were going with the you know with the hash and the <laughs> boat, but I, but I like the moral of the story, which is you, you need a plan at a higher level instead of just having a lot of activity. You know, one of my favorite quotes is you know don't confuse accomplishment with activity. Um, exactly. And people do exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's easy to start like going into tactics really fast, mm -hmm. I think, because there's so much, so many ideas out there, so many channels to test, you know. Um, yeah. So, so, and, and I think managers and CEOs are also pushing for motion, right? Like movement. We feel comfortable when we're busy, even if we're not being productive. It's, it's a part of the human element, I think. <laughs> so let's exactly. Dig, let's dig exactly. into your, your five Ps here. So I'm going to tell the people what the five Ps are, and then we'll kind of dig into each one. So you have purpose, plan, people, process, and platform. And when I first saw these, I was, I was kind of struck by them because this really sums it up. I mean, I was thinking at a high level about growth, and there's a place for everything that kind of runs through my mind. And so I was excited to find this as I did research for this interview because I'm going to start using this framework for my companies internally. So let's start with purpose. Um, when you say purpose, what do you mean by that? So purpose, I mean a few things. I think one clear thing is making meaning, right? Mm -hmm. All of us have so much opportunity these days. You know, all of us are well educated, you know, privileged. We can work with so many ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, a lot of times people get in, um, starting a company or a startup for the wrong reasons, right? Um, you know, they, they don't really truly believe in it as much or their heart is fully not, not in it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think 
um, making meaning. I think Guy, Guy, Guy Kawasaki has a really good talk on YouTube about making meaning. And like, if you if you make meaning, you may make money. But if you don't make any meaning, you will never make money. Right? Uh, okay. So, I think that that part is really important. So like, I think why you're doing it, the passion, obsession, you know, of, of going about it, because you know, as as you know, startups are hard, right? Absolutely. So, Having that in place is huge. I think the second big thing um, is having a clear goal, like a personal goal and a corporate goal, right? Mm-hmm. So a lot of people start companies not knowing whether there, it's going to be a small business that's really profitable or it's going to be a VC-funded company, right? Or it's going to be a public company or it's going to be an M&A, right? Mm-hmm. So where you, when you start your company or idea, where are you fitting in, right? Are you, um, are you going towards any of those, right? Because the math and the effort, input and output look very different, right? If you're going to be doing a, a, a profitable company, you know, that's a, kind of a self-run company, right, for yourself, then you need to focus on profit first, right? Mm-hmm. If you're running a VC company, you need to hit the metrics that VCs want, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or else they'll cut off the cash or not even invest, right? Mm-hmm. So I think uh, earlier planning on what is the purpose of why I'm doing this or why the company is doing it is important. So even amongst the founders, I think the next two things are, uh, you know, stage, right? What, you know, what is the stage you are at? Are you at idea, traction? Are you at growth? Are you at hyper growth, right? And establishing clear purpose around um, the, you know, and, and some of the KPIs around that stage is also really important. Yeah. Um, and the last one is called, what I call it, the uh, big, hairy, audacious goal, a bag, B-H-A-G, that Harvard yeah. calls it, is, you know, is going beyond, you know, you, if, you, if, you're, if you're like, for example, Uber, Uber, Uber could have said we're an app company, mm-hmm. right, that connects drivers and riders, right? But instead, everywhere on their website, they're saying we're revolutionizing um, transportation, right? And we're 1% of the way. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're freaking 99 percent of the way. Right. Compared to competition. But like establishing where you are and where you want to go. Right. Like mm-hmm. that big mission and big vision. Yeah. Uh, Google also, when they started off with this, said saying, um, hey, we want to organize the world's information. Right. They didn't say we want to get you the top 10 results. Right. Because <laughs> now you can see Google now and, you know, all kinds of projects around information retrieval. Yeah. So, so that's what I mean. So having a much bigger, broader vision. Yeah, it sounds like purpose is a lot of going into the future and then working backwards, right? It, it's going into the future of what you want the goal of the company to be, M&A, IPO, whatever, and then working backwards. It's going into the future and deciding what you want to accomplish in the world. Is it 10 results or is it organizing the world's information and then working backwards? Is, is that kind of yeah. sound right? Yeah, yeah, because even think about it, like when you launch a rocket ship, if it's even 0.1 degree off, it will land on a different planet, you know, <laughs> and that's what, that's the kind of precision you need in planning. It, it won't exactly work out the way you want, but at least you have to start with what you want, right? Yeah, so. no, absolutely. It's, it's the whole, you know, the, the old notion that plans fail, but, but planning is indispensable because it's just, exactly. ha- it's having something that you're working toward. Um, you're more likely to get something close to what you want than if you really don't know what the end result looks like. Exactly. And I think I, I don't I think number one mistake is people just don't uh, spend enough time on this yeah. point, right? I think so I want people to really think and work mm-hmm. through some of these frameworks. And these are available at Harvard Business Review, you know, how to do your BHAG bag. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of tools from good to great. Um, yeah, that's where I learned has, about it. Jim Collins, good to great. Yeah. That's where I learned about the BHAG. So there's available resources. You could buy a used book and figure it out, right? You just, I think people just need to spend time mm-hmm. with themselves and their founders. Absolutely. And so the first P is purpose. Have a purpose for yourself. Have a purpose for the business. Um, the second P is plan. So what kind of plan are we talking about here? So I think the, the uh, like we talked about earlier, based on the goals and the stage of the company, right? Mm-hmm. Um, now that you know generally where you're going, right, um, you should establish a solid analytics framework, right? Correct. So now we're coming down to, so we have this um, touchy-feely, you know, grand vision type thing first, mm-hmm. right? But now we need to start measuring. Now, are we, are we really going, you know, if you have a board, are you really at least going to the right country, you know, mm-hmm. in the right direction? Mm-hmm. You may not land up on the exact shore, but at least you know directionally, right? So 
now you're setting up that high level directional compass so um, if you're a small business again you want to be profitable you know as soon as possible because you know you'll run out of money um, if you're a VC company you need to figure out um, talk to VCs that might prospectively fund you right series mm -hmm. A series B don't just read stuff on the web like ask them what do you need for me to give me for you to give me five million dollars you know mm -hmm. what metrics do I need and then you wire that in into analytic your analytics framework and then you know, let the team lose on it, right? And so, so having every, that high... So everyone's okay, analytics is different based, based on their purpose. Exactly. So now we're kind of going down mm -hmm. into tactics. But I think the idea here would be... Um, and, and again, the, the planning will differ based on if you are traction or growth or hyper growth, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, if you are early stage startups, you're just trying to get to the next stage, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are Uber or Airbnb, you're in hyper growth phase. And you need to put a billion dollars to work, right? Now, that planning is very different, uh, but the same framework still applies, right? It's still planning, just it, it, it looks different when you're done. What happens when people within a startup have different um, ideas of what they're trying to accomplish? Uh, you know, let's say they have different purposes. Let's say they're looking at different metrics and they're getting excited about different goals being hit. What happens in a company like that? I think uh, it fizzles out, <laughs> I would say. It, it, it causes a lot of problems between founders, right? And um, I would say this five Ps in that way is therapeutic because <laughs> it brings all the shit out up front, right, rather than later. Yeah. People, start, people start thinking and all of them, all of us have expectations in our head, right, mm -hmm. even for our personal relationship that are never voiced. Mm -hmm. um, so it's similar, you know, I think it's going to be, it's going to be like the same thing, right? Like it will be, it's the same boat analogy I gave you, but it will be two or three people trying to row in different directions, even if they don't have the anchor now, but they're, they're still, still not going, going anywhere. <laughs> it's rowing at three different directions. So yeah, slightly different, but still a waste. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, okay, so we have purpose, and then we have our planning, which is figuring out what KPIs matter to get us to that purpose, to get us to that end goal. Um, and then the third one, which might be my favorite one, is people. I mean, we all know that you know people are the you know most important asset of a company. At least that's what we're always told. But you break it down and you say a growth team needs different kinds of people. And I'm just going to read these off here. You have the chief sure. growth officer, you have the quant, you have the designer, you have the hacker, and you have the channel guru. Now, I love that list because I know why all those pieces are so important, but I've never seen it written that clearly, right? Um, like on our team here, we have a channel guru and I know his value, but I've never seen anybody put that on a list like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, of all, walk me through the people. Walk me through the people involved the way you see it, you know, kind of starting with the, the chief growth officer. Yeah, so I think, you know, the, the, the number one person I see missing in, in a company is, you know, we have people responsible for, let's say, technology, right? A chief technical officer. Mm -hmm. We have res people responsible for finance, a CFO, right? But all of us are talking about how growth is so exciting and we need it, everybody needs to do it. And, you know, it's so important that's going to, you know, make or break a company. But I don't see one person uh, who is responsible financially and, you know, you know that, that he comes to work just doing that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so I think that's where I see like a chief growth officer or, you know, you, you see a lot more hiring on VP of growth and other, other things now, right? Yeah. But I think somebody who is uh, entirely responsible for the running the group and most importantly runs the, it's like it runs growth like a profit and loss center, right? Mm -hmm. Money coming in and money going out. I think the, the role of the CMO or VP of marketing is still a little bit nebulous. You know, they can get away with wasting money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but uh, for example, the chief growth officer would be really, really um, uh, responsible and pinned down financially, right? I, I like ways. that. I like that view of the world. <laughs> So, yeah, because traditional VP of marketing, you know, they get away by saying, oh, we did this for brand, we're just mm -hmm. testing this. But when you, when you give somebody a growth title, you know, they better grow that shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly <laughs> right. I love it. So, so it's important. I think that's the first important. Even psychologically, it's important. Um, organizationally, it's important. I think the second part um, is, um, 
having a quant on the team. And this is what I learned from my company um, that I started earlier called Searchforce. We brought a lot of data science and statistics and mathematics to marketing. And we directly got it from Wall Street, right? It's kind of one of the biggest hedge, big, from one of the biggest hedge funds in the world, right? Mm-hmm. And what I learned there is having somebody who has um, uh, an understanding of uh, mathematics and statistics. I think most people stop at advanced Excel, right, or pivot tables. Um, but there is there's a lot of a uh, lot of value to having somebody who um, understands math and statistics and can 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 work with chances and numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Um, in in a more uh, more rigorous way, right? Because now data is coming in at much larger speeds than we had earlier, right? And you could use much more information. Uh, you can use much. You can derive much more actionable um, data from uh, from all these sources, right? Yeah. So having a quant quant is important. Um, I think the third person is having a hacker, right? Because marketing could have so many ideas, right? <laughs> they have ideas all the time. Yeah. But unless you code it up and push it out there, like it, it doesn't exist, right? So you need a computer scientist, a coder who can get stuff out quickly for marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think as you mentioned, as depending on your uh, purpose and plan, uh, when you do your planning, you, ha- you will have some hypothesis around what channels you want to go after. Mm-hmm. So... Those initial channel gurus could be some channels you have already tested for statistical significance. For example, if AdWords already works for you, right, or Facebook ads already works for you, um, you know, up to a good degree, then you could get that channel guru there, right? Because mm-hmm. as you know, right, every new, uh, all these big companies like Airbnb, Uber, Tinder, you know, all of them have been built based on platforms that didn't exist before, right? Mm-hmm. They've been built on the phone or Facebook. Facebook, right, or taking, in Tinder's case, taking advantage of the swipe. So the, the channel guru, the, a company needs to be on top of each platform and each channel, and these people are super critical uh, to fill in those gaps. Um, of course, you, you'll get a lot more expertise, right? Um, but, but, but so that's why it's important because the, the weapons of distribution, right, weapons of mass distribution <laughs> yeah. is just kind of uh, who knows. Because each channel is getting really deep and wide now, right? So you need that expertise. It's a big world. It's insane how many channels there are to go after. Yeah, yeah. And then I think the, the last two are, you know, a designer, right? As you know, like now, because, we, you know, we have used Apple and, you know, Tesla and all these companies now, we're used to, even we're expecting you know, very high um, quality of Mm -hmm. user experience and empathy Mm -hmm. um, and stuff that works fast, easy, you know. So user experience is a critical part of the growth, right? So once you get in the user and once they're in your product, um, UX is such a critical piece to keep, you know, to convert them and keep them coming back and even referring you, right? So um, designer is super important. And the last one, which is actually the most important one, is the hustler, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, person who sees the gold on top of the mountain, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> is, is, you know, that person who really, really has a strategic understanding, a competitive understanding of the business, um, and also has this, you know, energy to keep driving the rest of the team, right? Mm-hmm. And suggest shortcuts, right? Not long. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, if there's gold on top of the mountain, let's not freaking crawl to it or walk to it let's take a helicopter right (laughs) and he gets a team to build the helicopter instead of you know walking there forever so so i think the hustler mentality is important and again i think it doesn't have to be all these people i think what i'm trying to get across is all these attributes of people yeah right all these qualities of people and it could be there could be multiple in one person absolutely you know it's interesting that you know you you say this is a growth team I think you've also just d- defined what a startup team needs. I mean, th- these, I mean, I, ca- I can't think of, you know, missing pieces. I mean, this is what it takes to get a startup off the ground is the same kind of roster. So I would just encourage people to even think bigger about those roles because I think those are some really important roles you just laid out. Um, and again, you, mi- you mentioned some that get missed, you know, the hustler, you know, the channel guru, like the quant. Um, I agree with you. I think they're, you know, of the utmost importance, but they may not get as much press as, you know, the hacker or the designer, that kind of thing. So I like that. So, so the piece of our purpose, plan, people, the fourth P is process. 
Um, what do you mean by process? Process of what? So this, you know, process is, by, by process I mean the process of um, dealing with uncertainty and taking advantage of certainty, right? So one example I'll give you, everywhere, for example, Uber launches, right? They have this massive supply and demand problem, right? Sometimes there's a lot more drivers, sometimes there's a lot more passengers, and every country has its unique customer behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So even though they have so much money and so many resources, they run into you know all sorts of issues right in every new market that they launch so for that uh, to to deal with that kind of uncertainty uh, plus also deal with uncertainty around um, what channels might work right most of us don't know what channel is going to be our biggest channel right as a startup like is it adwords is it facebook ads should i do seo should i do blog should i do podcasting should i do inbound marketing you know it's so confusing so that's what I call that is risk. You don't know how to go about it um, in the least, you know, spending the least money and the least time, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? So if you do it randomly, you're going to waste a lot of time and money, right? Mm -hmm. So the process that I talk about is bringing a scientific method. And this is what we, most of us learned in, um, you know, high school mm -hmm. <laughs> is, you know, when we go to the lab, like we just don't start mixing shit, right? And you know, in, in the beaker. Yeah. And you know, we what we do is we plan something. So, for example, we say, okay, the purpose of my experiment is to figure out, um, you know, something, right? So, in a clear way. So, in our case, it would be like uh, my initial purpose would be to um, to see if Snapchat works for me. Let's say mm -hmm. that could be the purpose, right? Um, and the research, you, you would do a lot of research around it saying, hey, all these other brands are using Snapchat, you know, they're getting this much conversion rate, you know, this is their CPA, you know, this is our case studies, this is what to do, what not to do. And then you come down to hypothesis. Then you say, okay, if we spend $3,000 over three months, I know I can get, you know, X number of video views or, you know, X number of conversions, right? And then you come down to running experiments. So you say, okay, over the next 90 days, I'm going to run 10 experiments to prove or disapprove the hypothesis, right? And once you start collecting data, because, you know, in the plan part, we laid out all the, CP, um, all the KPIs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a solid analytics framework. Now we can do analysis on all these experiments, right? How did they go? What happened? Is the data statistically significant to conclude, you know, whether the Snapchat works or not, or Facebook ads, or Google AdWords, or this landing page works or not, you know, anything that you experiment, whether it work or not, and then you draw conclusions, and, you know, you basically turn that into a repeatable process. Absolutely. So, so summary, what I mean is bringing a more scientific base and scientific analysis to, to running your growth. Yeah. So this could be for testing your landing page. This could be removing the login requirement, right? This could be testing new colors on your web page or your tabs, right? It could be anything, but the idea would be to uh, dump it into a, a process, right? Just work yeah. like scientists works and space engineers work, right? Mm -hmm. With that level of precision and process and not just randomly do things. Absolutely. And you think about the success that science has given us, you know, the scientific method, there's something to it. There's something about those steps that really lead to truth in so many ways. And so why not exactly. also use it in our, you know, in our, in our current situation? It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, because I think um, marketing has been pretty irresponsible so far. It's been very unscientific. <laughs> unscientific, yeah. Yes, it and has. I, think I, I see the value of creativity and intuition as well. And that can go into generating the ideas for these experiments, right? But they need to be validated by real data. Absolutely. At the end of the day, you're either making money or making art. You can't always do both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Right, and then your last P is platform. Um, and by this, you know, you mentioned it earlier, you call them, you know, weapons of mass distribution. You know, there's all these platforms that allow us to instantly get in touch with thousands or millions of you know potential customers um what does this p look like how does a, a startup master the platforms what should be their angle there yeah yeah so let me introduce platforms by platforms what i mean is um you know marketing technology right mm -hmm. if you look at the luma scape of marketing technology you'll see like billions of companies right <laughs> uh, so how do you organize that so the way i think about it is 
uh, or what is the value of it? The value of it is um, that it brings scale, right? It brings, um, even with a small amount of people, for example, if you have a company like my, my last company called Searchforce, you could automatically bid through millions of keywords, right? And you need one person on the team and suddenly you're managing hundreds of thousands of keywords, right? Mm -hmm. And the software is bidding based on the returns, right? So that can, that can reduce your time significantly, right? Tools like outreach.io, right? That automate like email sending and, you know, uh, sending repeated messages and measuring it. Mm -hmm. Or like autopilot, which does, you know, customer journey automation, right? Mm -hmm. um, all these tools and platforms can help you um, save a lot of time and money. And I think the last thing is gives you a lot of competitive advantage because there a lot of these are very analytically based. Um, mm -hmm. So... It gives you, as you know, the auctions are getting pretty crazy, right? Facebook ads, Google ads. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like ridiculous bid prices. So to compete with that kind of environment, you need sophisticated tools and platforms, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's that's the key key important part of it. And the way I think about it is, there's so many, right, <laughs> to sort through, and and that's yeah. the big challenge. And the way way I like to sort it through is by uh, Dave McClure's. Um, Pirates for metrics. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, met yeah, yeah pirate, metrics. Pirate metrics. Yeah, yes. pirate metrics. There you go. <laughs> so you could start with um, acquisition, activation, retention, revenue, and referral. Mm -hmm. So the way you can think about this whole growth, I call it the growth stack, is from all these marketing technologies, you pick the ones. Like, for example, when you do your process, right, mm -hmm. and you realize that, okay, something's getting choked in the retention. Right, I'm not able to retain people good enough, or you know, I have great acquisition, activation, retention, um, but I'm not turning into money, right? Or I don't have enough referrals, right? So you'll run into bottlenecks along this um, funnel, right? Anywhere, somewhere, and then you would say, okay, now I need to, more people for activation or you know acquisition, and then you go out and look for the best platforms and tools that enable you to do that. So mm -hmm. I would say not go crazy on trying to experiment with everything, but figure out where you have a bottleneck and then go out and fit the right technology. Absolutely. And, and you said, you know, this is a competitive advantage. And I agree. There's so many new ones popping up. There's so many new platforms that do so many clever things. They're like search for us. Exactly. If you didn't know about it, you would be at a disadvantage if that was a, a hole you were trying to plug in your business. Um, how do you stay abreast of all this knowledge? Like, how does someone, you know, I mean, do they just go to Product Hunt and do searches? Like, what, <laughs> do you have any tips on how to stay on top of all this? Oh, boy. It's super fast moving. It's hard for me even to be on top of it. Same here. Um, yeah, I wish, I mean, I guess you guys have a great community, growthhacker.tv mm -hmm. uh, as well. So I think joining growthhackers.com or, you know, um, growthhacker TV mm -hmm. would be a great thing because I think that gets all the minds together in one community and uh, be able to discuss these, right, and see what kind of a problem you have. Um, I think another way is also if you're a startup, join an accelerator, right? Um, I, you know, I, I mentor at Techstars as well as um, 500 startups, and um, it's an awesome resource. We have this internal tool called Dashboard. We can post anything we want on it, and very quickly you'll get real-time inputs. Yeah. So those are the few ways you could keep on keep in touch with it. I agree. Yeah. You gotta tap into a community. <laughs> the, yeah, you know, the, I, the, the shared intelligence is there. Trying to do it on your own is, is very difficult. Well, Samir, this has been amazing. I mean, I feel like this is a real framework or a growth stack, as you call it. You know, and just to kind of summarize here, you know, purpose. What are you? What is the goal for your company? What is the goal for you personally? Um, plan. What KPIs should we measure to get us to that goal? What's a real plan to get there? People. Who do I need around the office table to actually pull this off and make sure I have you know enough of the right people? Uh, process. Let's get scientific about it. Let's use the scientific method. Let's be rigorous. And then platform, let's not just go grab any tool, but let's grab the tools that really make sense for the holes in our business as we think about our growth stack. I feel like if people really think about the purpose, plan, people, process, and platform, that they're going to feel um, more in control about their own growth. They're going to feel less confused. Um, they're just going to have a direction that they didn't have before. Not that it's going to be easy, but that it's going to be understandable now um, if they really work through this. Um, growth is never easy, 
but it's doable, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's completely doable. And um, yeah, no, I think that's you summarize it really well. Um, and I think the the last thing I just want to say is like uh, just more about the framework, how you can use it is, you know, I, I think it's a very coherent strategic planning tool. So you could use it as that. Um, the other one is a gap analysis tool, right? Like you said, like, where am I and where do I need to go? Mm -hmm. And then you figure out the gap, right? This will help you figure out what is the missing pieces, right? Yeah. I think the third third tool is more of risk management, right? As you know, most startups will fail, right? You know, and very, very small chance of success, right? Especially to be, make it really big. So what you're doing with this tool is you're, you're, you're reducing the risk, right? And I think, as you said, um, gaining more control over what's happening, right? Um, and I think the last thing is just that all the five Ps are super well connected to each other. So, you know, if you just try to, let's say, start an awesome process, you know, but if you don't have a plan, it will suck. <laughs> if you have the you know, wrong people, you know, everything is a waste, right? Yeah. Um, you could, you know, so yeah, and you could have an awesome plan, but without a clear purpose, you're not going to be able to sustain the team longer term, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I think it's important, I want to highlight for the, for the people is, all of these are interrelated um, and you know, not think of them as a linear flow, but it's kind of all of them work into each other and help each other. Absolutely. And that's one of the reasons I like this because, you know, frameworks come out, you know, every day. <laughs> I mean, everyone has a framework for everything. Um, <laughs> exactly. but, but a lot of them, they're not as coherent. This one really hangs together. And it's one of the things I liked about it. It, it feels very, um, it covers a lot of ground and it hangs together. Uh, so I like to end every interview by asking these two questions. They're kind of fun questions, you know, to end with. Uh, first one is, what are you working on as soon as we're done with this interview? Whether it's really boring or really exciting. Walking the dog, running a meeting, what are you doing? <laughs> I am uh, sitting and meditating for an hour. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> Because my, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and, and this, all this growth stuff is awesome, but there's a lot of working. It works the mind a lot, and I think it, it needs to relax to, to have the creative, creative energy flowing. So That's a I'm huge sitting for insight. Now. That's a huge insight right there. Um, the time off makes the time on more uh, powerful. Uh, and then the last question is, what's the best advice you have for any startup that's trying to grow? I think the, the, the best advice I have, it, it, I think one of, one of his is definitely, you know, following the five Ps because I think as you said, a lot of founder issues and all those things will be resolved, like goal issues, so you're still going well. Um, I think two things, one uh, is, is knowing what kind of a business you want to build, right? Not just, oh, I, I have a great idea, let me just do something. So having the end in sight, I think, as you said, and planning backwards, I've seen missing a huge lot. Um, I think the second big thing is um, a lot of founders or founding teams don't like, they don't like losing control. Um, so delegating and I think having the right people and outsourcing to the right people when it makes sense um, and establishing your quality standards, uh, um, but still having the people involved, I think it's a big thing. Yeah. Um, and I think the third, th third biggest part is just that, um, you know, startups are not easy. You have to, you know, don't get seduced by seeing Larry and Sergey on, you know, the cover of Playboy, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> it's, it, it's tough work, but it's a lot of fun uh, and it's a lot of learning mm -hmm. as well. Um, so, so yeah, just be ready for it and, you know, just keep working until it works. So. Absolutely. I love it. Well, Samir, this is awesome. I know I'm inspired. I know I'm educated. I know that I'm getting a ton out of uh, our time together today. So I know other people awesome. will as well. So again, thank you for coming on Growth Hacker TV. Sounds good. Good luck to everybody.